So we had quite the eventful weekend. Uh, we had a bailout on Credit Suisse. They're not calling it a bailout, but it does certainly seem like that's the case. Also, a liquidity injection. It seems like the central banks are getting pretty nervous on the current state of just the world economy after all of the uh, bank issues we've been seeing so far. And that was just from this weekend. Also, for this week, we have events approaching such as FOMC on Wednesday, as well as Vixpiration on Wednesday, which typically it is the Wednesday of OPEX, which would have been last week. Uh, but this week, it is the week after. Uh, so a lot of things to talk about in today's video. One thing I do want to start off with this video is the 18-day cycle has remained strong so far. Uh, we did see the rejection from back here when I first shared it on this channel, which if you are new here, uh, do subscribe below. Uh, it is February 15th, this one that I shared last time when we had a rejection to the downside. Remember, whatever the momentum is going into the cycle will be reversed afterwards or is very likely to be reversed. Throughout this entire bear market, we've seen 100% accuracy of this cycle. Doesn't mean that in the future it has to have that same accuracy. Eventually it will stop working. Uh, but so far it's seen a lot of accuracy so far and it has marked the lows of this move down. However, we have typically seen about a three day move upward or downward depending on momentum going into that date. Uh, so we've already passed that three day move after uh, this level has been reached. So it could reverse off of this. We're kind of out of that safe bubble of reversal to the upside in this case, uh, because in previous times that we've had that move upward for about three days like back here and then it fell back and reversed lower afterwards. So three days is kind of like that safe target to see uh, after a reversal, it could be a lot more. As we saw from over here, it marked the exact high on August uh, 16th and then continued a lot lower. Uh, but also we've seen, obviously, like I just showed you, where we've only seen a reversal to the upside for about three days. So uh, we are beyond that point now, a very interesting time period in the markets. We did see a lot of put flow uh, from this past week, especially on IWM. We saw 4.1 million in premium for the 155 strike uh, for this 421 expiration. If you look a little bit further at the flow, you can see just puts on puts on puts, tons of them, millions in the premium, and a lot of these super far out the money. And it's no surprise we saw it on IWM because as you can see here on the daily chart, we had a fake breakout recently. It started in January. We had this big breakout of this pennant, and it was unable to hold up here and continued down. It has been one of the weakest of the major indexes uh, compared to tech, which has been the strongest, uh, but also compared to just the Dow Jones as well as the S&P 500, this has been the weakest of the major indexes. So the Russell not looking the best right now, and typically when you have a fake breakout like this, you see new lows met, which would mean we'd have to go below 162. That's just on a technical basis. And what happened last time we saw a similar pattern of a fake breakout like we saw up here was we also saw new lows met. And this actually was the start to the bear market last time where we had a breakout and it turned into a fake out because it fell back into the previous channel. So uh, this is something that I'm watching right now. A lot of bearish emphasis just for the rush just for the Russell. It even was held up a little bit by uh, QQQ from this past week as that was kind of holding up the whole market. Overall, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens if QQQ is unable to uh, stay with its strength going forward because then this could start to fall uh, fairly hard. But again, like I shared at the beginning of this video, uh, we did see a note from the central banks about a potential liquidity injection in the market starting tomorrow throughout uh, April. It's not the same as uh, quantitative easing. However, this will have implications on the market. So I'm very interested to see how price action fares for this week. I suspect that we will start off the week uh, fairly strong because of that news. However, that can still fade around that time of FOMC as well as the expiration on Wednesday. That's the key date to note. If we do see upside into Wednesday, I'd be very cautious of potential downside after that date. Remember, we typically don't see a high close on the VIX uh, heading into VIX expiration. We've seen spikes so far, but typically you don't see a high close on that date or going into that date. Uh, so, so far we've had numerous rejections off of this trend line right here. And also we found a support off of this lower trend line. So we're kind of uh, basing in between both of these lines. If we were to get above this upper trend line, that would start a pretty substantial downward leg in the markets, uh, just because this is a very critical line, as you can see with how many times the VIX has been rejected up here from. Uh, the same exact thing would apply if we fell below this lower line, we'd actually see a lot more strength in the overall market. So right now we're basing in between it. Watch for confirmation. A daily candle and especially two daily candles is very good confirmation. As we've seen in the past, there's been fake breakouts. We had up here, it was unable to hold above for two days and fell lower, but over here was able to hold above, retested and continued a lot higher. So look for something like that above this higher end range in the coming two weeks or so. If there is going to be that downward leg, which I do suspect will still happen here, uh, you do have to be careful with all of the macro news we've been seeing so far. Uh, but I do suspect we will still have that larger downward leg. And I certainly believe it is approaching fairly soon. This is kind of a dangerous time window between this week and next week. We are now beyond the quarterly OPEX 
for the market. So a lot of notational value has been wiped out and there's potential that could have helped prop up the markets, especially tech from this past like two weeks or so where you've seen tech kind of go on a tear. So we'll see what happens as of this week. Another thing I do want to talk about today is the Dow Jones on here. Remember, still watching this level, this downward trend line. We've retested it now for the second time uh, compared to SPX retesting its own downward trend line for the first time. This is the second time for the Dow. It's going to be a little bit weaker of a bounce. So far, it's been a very weak bounce uh, for it over here compared to last time where we saw a fairly decent sized run up. Uh, but do watch this, a confirmation candle below this level, especially to late daily closes, similarly to uh, what I was talking about on the VIX, would mean confirmation of further downside. And remember, kind of similar to what we saw with IWM, all of this up here is a breakout so far above the downward trend line. If we have confirmation below, that means all of this would be a fake breakout. And you know what that means based on technicals, what I just showed you with IWM, new lows would have to be met afterwards. Again, that's just a basis of technicals, but still watching for this, you do need confirmation with a few daily candles at least uh, to confirm that this was a fake breakout, of course. Uh, but do watch this very important line right here, very important box that we're in right now as it's retesting this downward trend line. Something else I'd like to talk about today is the dark pools. This was a pretty incredible week overall in terms of dark pool premium, probably the most we've seen in a very long time, maybe since fall. I have to look back at my data on that, but pretty confident to say we haven't seen this much in terms of premium since the fall. And you can see here, we had a $4.3 billion in premium singular dark pool print. Again, much different than a signature dark pool print. Singular hits the tape real time or within 20 seconds or so. It'll hit the tape after it was actually executed, at least the order. And this was at the 394.10 level. So very uncommon to see a singular dark pool print above 1 billion, let alone over 4 billion. So mark this level on your charts as a very large print. And we do see larger prints than normal on OPEX days, but still over 4 billion, not common to see at all, even on an OPEX day. So I definitely keep this in mind. And then also a 2.8 billion in premium for signature dark pool prints at this 394.46 level. So two very substantial prints. And also if you scroll down lower, a 1.3 billion at the 390.12 level. So tons and tons of premium hitting the tapes in just the dark pools based on Friday. And it wasn't only Friday that was crazy. You can look back at any day throughout this week. You can see here on Thursday, 2.5 billion at the 389. Also, if you go back to Wednesday over here, you can see that we had 3.1 billion at the 391. And if you're starting to notice a trend here, then you do have a good eye for dark pools. A lot of this is happening around the 389 to 391 level. Very crucial levels to watch, especially if we're able to hold above or below, especially for this week. That can give us a general idea of if there's a lot more weakness to come in the markets or also strength because this could be an accumulation phase. And there's a good possibility of that because just based on charts. You can see here we are around this downward trend line certainly could be accumulation around this range, or also it could be late selling because of a lot of fear in the markets of the banking risk kind of exacerbating itself here. So you do want to be careful with that. Look for confirmation with dark pools. You want to see if there's confirmation above or below these key levels. And when you do see that confirmation, then you can take a long or short position accordingly. And it's going to be a pretty large move, guys, off of around this range because of how much we're seeing in terms of premium in the dark pools. So uh, this is not something that will just be quick lived or anything. Uh, you'll see that it will continue for quite a while with whatever direction it chooses. Um, so you can see just going back through each day here, you can see based on Tuesday, we had the 5.7 million at the 385.36 level. Very, very large signature dark pull print. Uh, so do keep in mind all of this. The market is definitely getting ready for a large move. We'll have to see throughout this week what the Fed wants to do on Wednesday. Uh, it seems the consensus is about a 25 a basis point rate hike. At least there's 61% chance of that happening. But this one's pretty much up for grabs because of all of the recent events we've seen so far. At one point, it was a 71% chance of a 50 basis point rate hike. So a lot of changes in the past week. Uh, but we will see what happens throughout then. And do keep in mind, if we do have that kind of run up into the middle of the week, I remain with a short bias uh, leading up after that. Uh, so do be careful if that is the case on Wednesday. And it certainly looks like an exciting week ahead for trading. Just be careful with your risk because there's going to be a lot of volatile conditions. Other than that, though, appreciate you guys watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.